The rally was held on the same day President Obama unveiled his budget that critics say calls for more and quicker deportations. This comes as a bipartisan, comprehensive immigration reform bill could be introduced in the coming days. Uh, Juan Gonzalez, co-host on Democracy Now! and columnist with the New York Daily News, on Wednesday wrote a piece called, With Much at Stake, Gang of Eight Senators' Immigration Bill, due to be unveiled soon, awaits uphill climb. Um, Juan, talk about what is happening here. You have been covering this very closely. Well, I think the first thing that people have to understand is that what's at stake here? What, what this battle, which is going to go on from all, all the spring and summer and probably into the fall, uh, is really a, a battle over what will America look like in the 21st century? What will be the who is legitimately in the country and who will be legitimately allowed to come into the country uh, over the uh, next few several decades? Uh, and it's not the first kind of battle of this kind. Uh, the 86 immigration reform bill actually was not uh, fully comprehensive. We had a huge battle in the 60s, 1965, in the 1920s, uh, and then even further back in the 19 uh, in the 1880s with the Chinese Exclusion Act, which for 60 years then excluded a any kind of immigration of Chinese and other fo uh, folks from Asia into the country. So this is one of the many battles we've had in American history over the issue of immigration. Uh, and I think the the key thing to understand about this. This uh, uh, proposal, the Gang of Eight proposal, that no one has yet seen a bill. <laughs> Everyone is talking about the agreements that have been reached, but no one has actually seen the language of the law. And the devil is always in the details when it comes to legislation. So that, but what we have heard so far about the compromise proposal of the Gang of Eight, and remember, there will be a separate bill adopted in the House of Representatives, which will be undoubtedly far weaker uh, than whatever the Gang of Eight come up with in the Senate, and those have to be then recognized reconciled uh, and then signed into law by the president. So this is the beginning of a long process. Uh, and um, But what we do know uh, is that this, even this bill, the so-called, the, the, the compromise bill, is going to be heavy on border security. Uh, it's going to delay the, pros the process by which those who are undocumented in the country will be able to establish uh, their legal status and even citizenship a minimum of 10 years. So in the first 10 years, uh, there will be beefed up border security, more requirements, uh, more spending by the government, and already a, a enormous sum, $17.9 billion, was spent last year alone on border security in the United States. That will be increased. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, and the border has got to be 100 percent under surveillance, uh, uh, according to Congress, and there have to be triggers before anyone can then be uh, moved on to permanent uh, residency status, not citizenship, permanent residency status. Uh, and why are they holding that up to 10 years? Well, one of the things the immigration advocates don't want to admit is that by moving it to 10 years, you, you will not have any cost associated with immigration reform, because Congress only projects 10-year budgets. Uh, so that means that, because once the undocumented become permanent residents, they get qualified, for instance, for health care insurance uh, and as permanent residents. So the, uh, the Democrats and some of the proponents of immigration reform don't want the cost to, to, uh, to scuttle whatever legislation comes forward. So that's why they're willing to accept an inordinately long period for the undocumented even to become permanent residents. And then the question of si when will they be actually become citizens, uh, and that's the other, I think, uh, uh, dark secret about this, is that two-thirds of all the undocumented in the United States come from one country, Mexico. And the problem is that Mexico, when you talk about people going to the back of the line, to so those people who are waiting in other countries to get visas into the country, the waiting uh, time right now, there are people in Mexico right now who have been waiting 20 years to be admitted into the country. It's the longest line in the world. So you're telling the two-thirds of the undocumented that they have to get to the back of a 20-year line to be admitted into the United States. You're looking at the possibility that many Mexican uh, undocumented may be waiting 25, 30 years, unless the government also increases the country caps uh, so, that, uh, so that the cap for Mexico or China or India, the countries that always have the longest lines, uh, will be lifted so that uh, you shorten the line that people have to get to the back of. So, um, uh, so that's a whole issue just in terms of the immigration reform. But then there's 
another complex issue that's also going to be in this bill, which is uh, who gets to come into the country in the future uh, and, uh, and how. And there are actually going to be three provisions for labor flow that people are not paying much attention to. One is for farm workers. One is for other unskilled workers, like uh, hotel workers, uh, service workers. Uh, and then another one is for the scientific and technical, what's called the H-1B visas, uh, those who come in with professional technical skills. Each of these are going to have sharp increases in the number of people admitted. Uh, as many as 200,000 people uh, for, uh, will be admitted in the low-skilled categories uh, and uh, sponsored by their employers. But then the question becomes is, if you're sponsored by your employer, do you have portability? In other words, if you come in sponsored by one employer, do you have to stay with that employer in order to stay in the country? Or can you move your visa to, from one employer to another? What kind of job protections will you have? What kind of uh, 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 way, minimum wages will you be subjected to? Same thing for the farm workers. And then the other issue is the H-1B uh, workers. Um, uh, right now, there are about 85,000 people allowed into the country every year uh, f under professional, skilled, scientific uh, visas. Uh, and. Um, uh, the business community, Silicon Valley, wants to eliminate all caps. They just want to be able to bring in as many people as possible, highly educated, to come into the country. They want to change American immigration policy from give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, to give me the your well-educated, those who can afford to pay uh, either to come to a graduate school in the United States to get a quick uh, visa into the country uh, for permanent status, or who can just basically pay their way into the country. Uh, and so give me your affluent and your well-educated. Uh, so that is a — and the numbers that are decided on that is going to have a real impact on what future immigration flow into the country will look like. Uh, so all of these things are being debated in this bill. It's not just like the undocumented. It's the question of what will the future flows of immigration to the country. And then there were the, like little side issues, like what about the several thousand children that are now in foster care because their parents were deported, <laughs> and, and yet they are American citizens. Will those parents be allowed to come back into the country uh, to, to reunite with the children that were basically taken away from them? So there's a lot of stuff, and, uh, and whatever comes out of the Senate, remember, is only the Senate version of the bill. It will then have to be reconciled with a House version. So that's why I always tell people, pay attention to the details. Uh, continue to lo lobby your congressmen and your senators about what portions of particular aspects of the bill you think are important, because this is really a bill that will determine the future composition of the United States in the 21st and century. And finally, one, <clears throat> the composition of the Gang of Eight, how they were chosen. Well, they basically came together. You've got John McCain, uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, Marco Rubio, uh, and um, uh, I forget the, f the fourth Republican right now. And then you've got uh, uh, Chuck Schumer is a leader of the group. Uh, he's the, uh, 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 along with uh, Bob Menendez. And they basically are a group that is trying to at least craft a bipartisan proposal uh, in the Senate. Uh, but again, uh, as I keep reinforcing, that's only the Senate. <laughs> you still got to see what the House comes up with, and then the two have to be reconciled. So the weaker the Senate version is, that will be the floor, the minimum, uh, of what the bill would be like. It's, it's definitely going to, to uh, uh, get, um, uh, uh, get weakened after, the, uh, uh, after uh, the final bill will be weakened compared to what the Senate version Jeff is. Jeff Flake, fourth. Jeff, Jeff Flake is the fourth one on the Republican side, yes. Uh, so, uh, so it's a big battle, uh, and people need to pay close attention to the details of what happens. And Dick Durbin, a Democrat, Mike ben, uh, Michael Bennett uh, from Colorado. Right. as well, and, on the Democratic as side. Long, as well along as with Schumer and, and uh, Menendez, yes. Well, um, of course, we'll continue to follow this issue. Um, Juan Gonzalez, you will link to your article at the uh, at our website at democracynow.org, has written a piece in the New York Daily News about this legislation that no one has seen yet, at least, um, not the and not outside the Gang of Eight and their friends. This is Democracy Now!, Democracy Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.